Okay, okay. So I gotta talk to you. <clears throat> I gotta talk to you guys about this chapter. One Piece chapter 994. I gotta say one of my favorite chapters of Wano so far. It was, it was, it was an exciting chapter. I would say it progressed the story. A lot went on in this chapter that I really, really liked. And again, we're gonna dig into bits and pieces. We're not gonna get too technical because we know we wait for the translations on Sunday. Those are official. Those are the ones we normally go by. But this chapter, I know it's a surprise, right? This chapter was not expected to be out like today or this early. So it, it's a surprise, it's a shock, I know. I was I was shocked as well, but we're gonna talk about it. And I'm really excited to talk about it because some, some of these moments legitimately made me laugh out loud. If you watched live reaction on my other channel, Brago the Ace, you will see that some of these moments were just spectacular to me, okay? So without further ado, let's get into it. One of the reasons why I enjoy this chapter so much was that this was the final edition of this cover story. The, the Capone beige and his family with Pound, it's done. It's done. Going off into the sunset, surrounded by gunshot, whatever. <laughs> it's done. So let's, let's get to the chapter now. So it is confirmed. Kiku no Joshi lost her arm. It's not as, I guess, vague as Jozu's was because Jozu in the anime looked like he lost his arm. And then even in the payback war, it looked like he had his arm back, but we're not really sure. She lost her arm. And then Kinemon had to cauterize. I think that's what it said it means. Her arm, you know, apply some heat so that to stop the bleeding so that she can continue fighting. And Kiku had a look in her eye, even though she's hurt, that made Kaido say, you guys are impressing me. This resolve is what I love. And you know, Kaido is growing on me. Like every time we have moments of Kaido showing more of his personality, showing things that he truly values, he grows on me because Again, from his introduction, he seemed like a very bland, generic shonen antagonist, and it seems to be a lot more depth to him. And of course, having his son or daughter, that's how I'm viewing her after this chapter, it adds to Kaido. It definitely adds to Kaido and some of his motives and things that he holds true to his heart. I'm loving it a lot. Something interesting in this chapter as well was Kaido not only talking about Whitebeard and Roger and them liking the samurai, but Kaido's transformation. I think that is a very underrated piece of art. In a way, you can visualize this being animated just by looking at the picture. You see Kaido in the midst of his transformation from his dragon form to his human form, almost in a way like Gear Fourth with Luffy with the air running out of him and him going back to his regular form. That's how that looked and it was beautiful. And just with what he was saying as well, it just felt right. It felt perfect. It's just like he's transforming back into his original state, talking about the resolve and death. That is, That was very well done. Kaido says this, which tells me a lot about Kaido. He said a quote that said, it's not the advancement of times, but rather in death that humans attain true or perfection. That is a great, great quote and it can be translated or interpreted as kaido saying you know in death a lot of things that you've done can be viewed as perfect or so that's when you immortalize yourself right how you go out how you lived is great but how you go out the things you leave behind can be even more valuable than you know how you've lived your life and again you can be immortalized and be a a figure in history forever like gold roger he started an entire new era based on his words before he died with white beard as well how he died of course, how you live is important as well because people don't forget how you live. But in death, that's how you truly become immortalized. So that goes back and it's consistent with how Kaido has been saying things in regards to how he wants to go out, how he valued Whitebeard's way of going out. So I think I really enjoyed that. Again, the, um, the consistency is great for me, along with the quote, along with getting more of Kaido's ideals and philosophies. Just really good. I like how Kinemon did shut him down and say, okay, you can say all that, but we're not going to be flattered just to be killed by you. Like, we don't want to just go out on a, you know, on a high note saying, oh, Kaido said we were doing great, so we're going to go out valiantly. No, we don't want to go out the way. We don't want to die. We want to kill you. To the funny moments. First off, they said Jimbei and Straw Hat Luffy. We're back to the basement first floor. They say Jimbei and Straw Hat Luffy, watch out. They're really powerful. Then the next panel, we see Sanji's like, yo, why didn't they say black leg as well? And it's like, yo, Sanji keeps getting screwed. And getting the short end of the stick, but it's so funny because we know that he definitely wants to be acknowledged. But at the end of the day, Sanji's going to be Sanji no matter what. But I just thought it was a funny ass moment highlighting Luffy, highlighting Jinbei. And it's a way that Oda, again, I think Oda knows what the fandom is talking about. And Oda is slowly but surely trying to pit Jinbei and Sanji against each other, right? Trying to have us remove Sanji from the monster trio, not acknowledge him as such. But I think it's funny because Jinbei is not thinking about any of that. Jinbei just really wants to, you know, help Luffy. But Sanji, he wants to help Luffy as well. But it's just part of his gag. And I think it's hilarious, right? The highlights of this chapter for me, 
okay? My guys, Hamlet and Fortrix, okay? <laughs> okay, Hamlet is the giraffe smile, Fortrix is the chicken smile, right? That's not a bad thing. Those, you know, are serviceable animals, serviceable smile fruits. But they spawn. First off, Hamlet spawns from the mouth of this giraffe and he's just dangling and hanging, you know, Nintoryu, Two sword style, how can you exist that way? But even worse than that, we have Fortrix who literally spawns out of the ass of a chicken. What? Oda, you are such a troll, but that just had me dying because I couldn't believe the audacity of Hamlet and Fortrix to talk as much as they did while dangling and literally coming out the ass of a cock. Wild, but I, I must say that was peak, peak comedy, especially what happened in Transpired Post that when Sandy just said, yo, the way you spawn is annoying. <laughs> like, what? How do, how do you spawn that way? Literally, how do you spawn that way? That, just so good, just so damn good, right? Queen again, very impressed with this chapter. I'm not gonna get too deep into what's going on here too much because again, I want to I want to wait a bit for the dialogue, but I'll say this queen is a very interesting and maniacal villain And it goes back to what I said in the last chapter in which queen reminds me of a scientist a mad scientist in which he's always Experimenting right always doing these these little games these little things to make people suffer in a very elegant yet Psychopathic way, right? It's a weird way that he has fun which reminds me again of a mad scientist his plague ice demon thing. At first I said it was, you know, it's a genius thing for him to do, especially in war, but this thing is gobbling up not only allies, but obviously the opposition, and he's put them in a situation in which they almost have to work together to save themselves or work against each other. Obviously, I think right now they're working against each other because Hote is saying, don't let the samurai recover. And they're saying, if we don't recover them, then we're gonna, lo we're gonna lose our comrades. So very interesting way for Queen to put them in a scenario in which they have to fight against each other, even if, you know, they're going against, they're going for the same goal, but they're inherently gonna fight against each other because they're starting from the opposite side. I think we could see a situation in which they come together and work together to take down a poo so that they can help all of them. But initially, at this point, you have to look at them and say, okay, this is free for all, every man for himself, every group for themselves because we need that antidote. Another thing is Hote and seeing how Queen operates, it's weird because I'm like, Hote was going to search for, we're assuming Orochi. Hote is back, we haven't seen Fukurakuju yet. So what's gonna come of that? We have to wait and see. Queen, however, is rising up the ranks for me as one of my favorite characters in Wano. I think, again, the way he goes about his business and just how dastardly the things that he does is, it's, it's great. I, I liked it. I really liked it because it goes back to Wano or Udon, I should say. When Queen put Luffy in the scenario in which he had to decide in regards to saving Hiroguro or saving Kid, he puts you in a situation in which he has to see you suffer, make a decision, right? And of course, there's no good decision. There isn't a great decision, but it's a way to make you suffer not only based on your decision, but eventually you're gonna die as well, right? So just really maniacal and sadistic. And I really appreciate villains that can do that. Like for Doflamingo, that's why he's one of my favorite villains or characters of all time, just because he is the walking sadist. Like that's what he enjoys in the midst of chaos that's when he's the most happy he wants to see the world burn and i think for every great story or great arc you have to have a great antagonist to really have it truly shine so really really good shit um yamato i gotta say it's almost as if yamato was saying allow me to reintroduce myself in a way how she got introduced as odin it was hard to take her seriously where it's like okay you want to be this guy because you you know you enjoy how he lived you can model your life or model yourself after someone just doing it in your own way when you try to completely mimic them and take on their identity it's hard for people to take you seriously or to try to acknowledge you in a way that you want to be acknowledged i think this chapter again i don't want to go back to the he she thing but i think this chapter in a way is Yamato reintroducing herself or Oda reintroducing Yamato to the audience of course to you know Shinobu and Momonosuke and saying she can stand on her own too she doesn't need to hide behind the name of Odin to be impressive and I really enjoyed that I mean that attack first off she get it from her daddy okay taking that point blank attack didn't affect her whatsoever then it seems like she sent a ranged attack a ranged blow and completely annihilated that guy and Sasuke's just there like I've never seen this before who is this kid is this the same Yamato where I think sometimes when you truly accept yourself accept who you are that's when you can truly blossom and truly achieve true power and I'm not sure if that's what's happening here to Yamato it's a bit you know it's a bit weird because people may say you're trying to push an agenda in regards to Yamato and her 
not about that okay i do think yamato is great and especially the side boob I, I appreciated that as well but that's it's not about that yamato is reintroducing herself and it's a way in which the audience can reconnect with Yamato outside of Odin. And in this scenario, something that I've always questioned, how is Yamato going to explain how she's doing things to Momonosuke and in this case, Shinobu? It's weird. And for them, they're like, you know, what are you talking about? Like, so I'll say this because <laughs> it's, it's so exciting. It's a really exciting chapter. I'll say this. This is how she should have gone about things. I appreciate and I love how Odin lived and that's really the motivation for everything I'm doing. But I'm Yamato, the son of Kaido, or the daughter of Kaido, however you want to say it, right? And I'm going to support and fight for you guys to the death. End of story. You would get a lot more respect that way. So, great chapter. Sunday, the official will be released. And of course, we'll dissect that and get really deep into that. The things that Queen is doing and even dissect more of Yamato's character. But so far, great stuff. Just great stuff. Really just going to make my weekend. No doubt about it. Let me know what you think, guys. How do you feel about Yamato? How do you feel about Queen? How do you feel about Hamlet and Fortrix? And of course, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Follow me on Twitter at BragoDH. Follow me on Instagram at BragoDH. Thank you to my patrons. I appreciate you guys so much. Like, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Shout out to Hamlet and Fortrix. Peace. <laughs>